Hey, what's going on guys? JQ with Tech Creation. So a few of you guys were interested in seeing a what's on my MacBook Pro video after my recent setup tour. And to be honest, I wasn't even sure if anyone would be interested in watching that. But I ran a poll on Twitter and the majority of you guys seem to be leaning towards a yes. So as per your request, let's check it out. So I do pay monthly for Adobe Creative Cloud, which is about 20 bucks a month. It's well worth the investment. So the main apps I use are Photoshop for my video thumbnails and of course Adobe After Effects for most of the VFX work you see on the channel. I have access to all of Adobe's programs in the suite as well as all of the latest updates. You can find all of that up in the taskbar tray along with some free stock photos depending on which license you buy. I highly, highly recommend that you guys take a crack at their free trial. To a company that of course as many of you know is Final Cut Pro 10, simplicity, performance and compatibility is what I look for in a non-linear editing software. Final Cut Pro is becoming more and more powerful over time with support for tons of plugins that really makes this feel like it's iMovie on steroids. I can do some deep color corrections, some masking, some tracking, all without having to jump in between programs. It's one of those, if it ain't broken, don't fix it type of things. I'm using it right now to record these voiceovers and I don't see myself switching anytime soon. Next, I have this utility from the Mac App Store that's called Magnet, and it goes for 99 cents. So it basically emulates AeroSnap, the feature that you find in Windows, which allows you to drag windows to each side of the screen to snap them into place. Now you can snap your windows into halves or quarters, or just even a mixture of all of them. I have a setup so it launches on startup. So once I'm booted up, I'm good to go. So yeah, this is one of those utilities that you think is useless until you actually need it. Speaking of utilities, I also use Android File Transfer, which lets you browse and manage your files on your Android smartphone, just like you would on a PC. Macs don't exactly get along with Android devices, so it's a must for any Android slash Apple hybrid users out there like myself. Next, I have the Mac app for Send Anywhere. Now, if you've been following the channel, you're probably already tired of me mentioning this app, but for those of you who are new, Send Anywhere is an encrypted real-time cross-platform file transfer app that's much faster than any other wireless method that I currently know of. I usually use this to transfer thumbnails to my smartphone to post on Instagram or just for generic file transfers between all my devices. Now for my Twitter needs, I use Tweetbot. It's a really popular application for Mac. It saves the hassle of having to launch Chrome every time. It's pretty pricey at $9.99 on the Mac App Store and I think it should have been free. But I mean, what are you gonna do? It doesn't take up too much space visually and storage wise and I've been happy using it so far, so. And then last but not least, my music streaming service of choice is Spotify. So I finally made the transition full time after using Google Play Music for quite a while. And the reason for that is because I just find Spotify to be better integrated with more applications and it just feels like a lot more of a mature platform. Also, their streaming quality is really top notch. It's easier, in my opinion, to download songs for offline listening. And I really dig its remote feature if you happen to be streaming Spotify on a different device on the same network. Works great. The music to me seems to be better aggregated in their playlists. And at 10 bucks a month, it's really not that bad. Yeah, it's another bill for most people, but for music listeners, highly recommend in my opinion. So there you guys have it. Those are basically all the apps and programs I use on an everyday basis. And if you guys know of any cooler recommendations or tweaks for my MacBook, feel free to drop them down below in the comment section as I'm always eager to try out new things. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to answer. All right, uh, what else? Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.